Welcome back, lords and ladies, to Sorcery, with me, Cornish Knight, and our digital pick your own adventure tale. Now, let us dive right in, shall we? Where we left off, we just picked a fight with the Sergeant at Arms, who had basically been guarding the gateway out of what I believe is our own kingdom into, like, the wild country beyond. We've bought some supplies, we've picked up our spell book and we've got a little bit of money left so let's press on with our adventure you reach the foot of the main the mighty gate it's sealed the sergeant places one hand on the wood the gate has been locked the gate has been locked for some time to deter raiders he tells you but you will have no difficulty the stars and the stairs in this place allow for a dupe spell to be crafted and he stands back cast a spell Oh boy, we actually have to pick out the characters for this. Okay, so it needs to be... So it needs to be... That's cool. Dupe spell, I think it was a dupe or a doof. Let's try dupe spell. Open locks and doors. Requires one stamina. Cast. Okay, this is going to be interesting. We actually have to remember what our spells are called. You weave the spell. One one by one, the great timber tumblers of the door begin to crack, to creak and groan. Then with the hinges turn, with a, loud, with a noise like a hail of, con of a cavernous roof. These gates have not opened since the last champion was lost, the sergeant says. I wish you'd more luck than he. Perhaps you will even meet him on your travels. If I overtake him, then it, he was too slow. I fear he is dead. But that's not concern me. If I overtake him, then he is, then he is too slow. The sightmaster nods, peering at something on the horizon. I believe he is returning, but transformed. I hope you do not meet the same fate. He claps your soda. Continue. Enter the gate. Together you step into the saddle of the war. One, l one last word, he declares. When you have the crown, find the highest point for you to find the highest point you can find. We will be watching. Watching from where? I understand. I will not wish you I will not wish you a safe journey to Kahar to Kari, for the wa the way ahead is not but is not but safe, the sergeant murmurs as he peers into the distance through the open gate. The sight master warriors are selected from birth for their incredible powers of telescopic vision. You cannot help but wonder how far he can see. Tell me what lies ahead. This path leads first to Kantopani, a settlement of traders through mo most are rogues and thieves. You should be there before the sun has reached its peak, he sighs. From there, three routes lead to Christatani. No, sorry, Christatanti. Christastanti. No, but no single route is safe. Kahabad is a land of devils. And beyond Kari, I cannot see so far. He says, but once I cannot see so far. He says, but once you have crossed the city port of traps, you will enter the Barklands. They say that day and night they are controlled by forces other than the sun, and from Kari too, your progress will be watched. It is time to go. You thank him, pass for the gate, he has the faces of the folk watching you depart reveal the hopes that rest on you and your quest. The early morning air is crisp and rising and the rising sun paints the slopes and sage of peaceful beauty, concealing the evil that lies beyond. Well, that's pleasant. Let's see, where to go? Into Kahabad. 
The path winds through slopes of wild scrubland. The countryside is deserted, and the eerie silence is broken only by the swaying of the case of the crowing, cawing of the occasional crow. There is a spell, f a spell for hearing what they say, but you do not have the equipment it requires. The bird appears to pause in the air to examine you as you pass. They make you uneasy, as if you are intruding in their presence. Keep walking. Barely an hour beyond the wall, and the air begins to grow foul. The Samutan, Samutanti hills are infested with pestilence of the bar Barklands. It saps the energy from your body, leaving you feeling nauseous and weak. Cover your mouth, keep walking. Well, I'm still going to have to breathe, so I'm going to have to oh, cover my mouth. You cover your mouth with your neck scarf, but it's no good. You, they warned you of this. You will grow accustomed to it the longer you are out there. But for the moment, you must be careful. Your maximum stamina is decreased. You can see your stamina at the top of the screen. If it reaches zero, you are too tired to carry on. Stamina can be regained up, re regained up to maximum by eating rations or resting. Interesting. Right, so we've got two options in front of us, folks. We can go to travel across country, or we can try going, going to the low rise. Now, if we look at our map. I get the feeling if we go down to Lowe's Rise, we'll go down into Cantopani, which is basically a merchant and like den of thieves and merchants. Or we can try going cross country, which would cut all that out. But the downside of that is we don't have much stamina. Hmm, we don't have much gold either, or rations. Well, let's go to the low rise, shall we? Another hour passes and you crest a small hillock from the top of which you can see the path continuing downwards into a small settlement of huts. This must be Cantopani. Look at the village, look at a way around, move on. Let's look at the village from a distance first. From this distance it's hard to make out much about the town except that it must be desperately poor. The fields on either side are brown with cake mud and a few pen penned animals are thin and wizened like thirsty vines. No wonder the site master warriors don't trouble themselves to protect this place. There's nothing here to protect. Okay, that seems a bit harsh. Um, yeah, let's... I mean, I don't think we can... What's this? Avoid the village? The problem is that they're all desperately poor. If they're all desperately poor, they may just try and murder me for my goods. Because I have got food on me. So... I don't want to do, take a detour. I don't know if I've got the supplies for it. Of course, if you were scared of town like Cantopani, you would not hope to save, to survive in Kahabad proper. You follow the path down into town. The round huts are made of hard-baked, bright clay, and the roofs are thinly thatched. As you pass, eyes appear in dark doorways, tracking your every move. For a moment, they seem like they've. It seems like this will be all you see of this town's inhabitants, but then a villager appears from one of the dwellings and block your path. Look at him, threaten him, push him out of the way, cast a spell. Ugh, God, I don't know the spells off the top of my head. I mean, there's one for dumb, which will make him go... Less, and less intelligent creatures. Let's look at him. He is five feet tall, you... They cannot grow much taller out here in this poisonous air. He has a thick set of arms and thighs and is half clothed in tattered breeches. He eyes... What, is that all he's got on? Breeches? So he's basically bare-chested then. He eyes are, his eyes are wide and his long red hair and beard stand out from his face in a wiry tangle. Halt, stranger! he commands. What business have you in Contampani? I want to buy equipment, I'm merely passing through, I need directions, I'm a hungry traveller and need to eat. I want to buy, let's let's see what, maybe if I offer to buy stuff they will be more tempted to leave me alone because I'm bringing business. I want to buy some equipment. He grunts, but you can see that he is pleased, that with emotion he encourages you to follow, taking you through a village to a large hut. Inside you find a building is inside the building you find is a storage house. The quartermaster is somewhat plumper than you than your guide is seated at the table. Always the way those that hold, those that are in control of the goods tend to be the best off. 
stride over to him, wait to be introduced. This lady is here to do business, the villager explains. Get out of here, flee, the fat man replies, getting up from his seat to hustle the villager out. Then he turns to you with a smile and beckons you to sit. Greeting, stranger, he purrs. So I show you my wares. Do you treat your customers so roughly? Please. Do you treat your customers so roughly, you ask, unimpressed by his attitude towards the poor villager? He'll get his commission, the fat man replies gruffly, if you buy. Sell me the wares you have. The man waggles his finger. Wait here. He dis. He wait. Hit, wait there. He disappears for a moment into this into a side room. Right. We can probably search through. And we can wait. I'm gonna probably wait. I don't really want to pick trouble with this guy. You wait. The merchant returns carrying a large box. For you, he declares, moving his hands as he speaks. You've come to the right place. This collection, the very best, our most our most strange and interesting artifacts. Ahem. Collected from other travellers who have come this way. He begins to lay the items out in front of you, treating each with great care. You have fourteen pieces of gold to spend, but there is an but is there anything here that you want to buy? A herbalist potion, a musical pipe, a weapon, a leather bag, a jewel. I think it's maybe a leather bag perhaps to carry stuff and maybe I can increase my carrying capacity. You lift the bag from the table, it, it contents rattle. Teeth, the merchant replies, sewing his own his own little finest creature's teeth, only three gold, three gold pieces, two. Put it back. You put the bag down, some from, somewhat disgusted. Please, the merchant says, and something else today? You have 15, 14 gold pieces to spend. Okay, obviously when you put it down you can't pick it up again, I have to remember that. Okay, um... Musical pipe, uh, I'm gonna take, the, let's look at the herbalist potion. You lift the flask, the flask containing some kind of potion from the box it, and turn it between your hands. The liquor inside is thick and purple. Four gold pieces, the merchant demands. What does it do? You reply. Merchant smiles. I am a mere tradesman, he answers, but I assure you it is of the finest quality for anything else I sell, only the finest would do. I will take it. You hand over four gold coins to the merchant and take the flask, whatever it is. Smell it. You sip, You slip back the stopper and take a, sn a course of sniff. The smell is truly ap appalling and you seal it back up. Bimberry, but what is it used for? The merchant watches arms folded, giving no offer of reversing the trade. Very good, the merchant says, putting the money in his pouch. You woman of good judgment, I see that. What else? Leave the rest be. Thank you, declare I have, I have seen enough. The merchant nods his head. Please do visit us again. You get to your feet and take your leave. The villagers become curious about you, their doors opening a few inches wider. Should they offer hospitality? Should they offer hospitality, your progress would be delayed, and you should continue quickly on, leaving the village and approaching the hills themselves. Right. Leaving Contapani behind marks the first, the true start of the wilderness. Beyond the, that tiny outpost, where are scattering homesteads and Kari, a thriving city port, but all there are. But all are touched by cruelty, isolation, and fear. The bark, the bark, barlands, and the long shadow cast by the Mamping Fortress darken everything. And with the crown gone, no time to reflect. And with the crown stolen, things suddenly get worse. In the long years since Charlana, Charlana, the reformer, founded the alliance. The crown has been passed from one kingdom to kingdom every four years, ensuring each kingdom has its turn to lead. But no more. Riddlestone, Lundeland, Galan, Galantari, and Brees have all enjoyed its power. But when the crown came to Analand, it was stolen by birdmen from a axemen and carried off to Mapang. With the crown, the archmage will be, un will be unstoppably powerful. There is no chance of sending an army against him. A military force will not survive the journey. 
So here you are, a lone adventurer, walking the lone path to Mapang alone. Five minutes later you reach a fork in the road. The sergeant, for his eyesight, hadn't mentioned this. Oh dear. Fork in the road. Well, looking at a map, it looks leads toward probably something that what they're calling... Snacker, snacker mines, or we can go up towards these group of villages and try and get over the river there. Hmm. Let's just check our items we're carrying. So we've got magical items: brimbleberry juice, not much gold. We got dumb, make cre dumb makes creatures extremely clumsy, hot, well. Law. Our law is probably what I was thinking of, but it can't be used. Non intelligent creatures. Foth or zap. I get a feeling that I'm going to have to be really keeping my eye on using these spells. Zeus. I should probably remember Zeus as well. Doc? Hmm. Oh, that's a good one. I, I probably need to be writing this down. Right. I don't fancy going through that wood too much, so let's press on to the crossroads. The road splits around the base of a gigantic, gi gigantic tree, but does not, but does not rejoin the other side. The left path winds down to a valley, and the right rises up a slope towards a thick forest, a thick forest of hills. Look to the right. It's hard to see much further uphill. The forest is sudden and thick, and the path narrow. It may be hard going in that direction, but the hills will involve a lot of clambering eventually, and you may get a decent view of the next leg from up from the top of the ridge. Look to the left. You pause to consider the lower route. This there is a river there. A path follows the left bank. It is a safe a safer route, secluded and protected. But the curving of the landscape would mean you are almost backtracking. You are about to make your choice when you hear a faint cry from somewhere close at hand. Look around. You look around, finally up into the branches of a tree, a pair of wizened, callous feet dangling down over your head, about to drop on you, perhaps. Pros, throw something into the tree? Who's there? Clamber up, let's go. Who's there? Who's there, you call? The voice cries again a little more. Up here! Elp! Elp! I can't get down! It's the voice of a feeble, weary old man. Stepping back a little, you can see him clearly, a thin, as thin as a stick and dressed in dirty rags. God, he does look dirty, and he really is dressed in... What are you hiding from? How the old man got this tree is a puzzle. He must have been escaping someone fierce and to clamber so high. What are you hiding from, you cry. Damned Elvins! He replies, I was travelling Dumpus, from Dumpus to the outpost settlement in Ireland, but I was waylaid by Elvins. Elvins rod me blind, all but took my eyes and left me up, up the tree, this tree. I, I keep getting older, you see. We all do, but some worse than others. Clambering, clambering up, but now I'm too old to get down. Help him out of the tree, leave him up there. Switching yourself onto the lower, swinging yourself onto the lower branches, you reach up and grab the old man by the waist. He is light as a leaf, and within a moment you lift him to the ground. Thank ye, he, thank, thanks for that, thanks for that, he remarks, brushing himself down and almost knocking himself over in the process. I was just starting to get a bit, you know, perturbed, but I'm not, but now I'm on the safe, but now, but I'm on the safe now. He seems remarkably confident, considering that the slight stumbling might break him into bits. What will you do? 
What do I get in return? Leave him be and move on. Let's just leave him be and move on. You move. You must move on. The light is fading already, and the old, the old as the old man dashes off downhill towards Contempani at a terrifying pace. You consider your options: the high path, or we can go the low path, which is a bit of a backtrack. But I don't like the idea of going into those woods. Hmm. Let's go this way. You head into the valley, it seems the safest route, secluded without providing an opportunity for an ambush. And, not, and no matter how quickly darkness falls, the riverbank will guide you your way. The path winds alongside a bubbling stream, you follow it, keeping it to the west bank. The valley itself becomes narrow on, it, narrow on either hand, on, on either hand. You, a good spot for an ambush. You, you can only hope that nobody knows you are here. After an hour's walk, you begin feeling hungry. You will need to eat at least once a day to keep your strength up. Hmm. Stop to eat or continue? Let us stop to eat. Taking a seat on the grassy bank on above the water, you eat a you eat a quantity of your cheese and bread. The rest are, you rest for half an hour or so and continue on your journey. Right. We are out of time for the day, ladies and gentlemen. If you have liked, please press the like button. If you wish to subscribe, please press the subscription button. You can follow me on Facebook or Twitter at the links provided below. I've been Cornish Knight, and I shall catch you all next time on Sorcery. Goodbye.